Hello, I'm Ian Evans. Today we're going to have a look at the Connected Components Workbench um, software from uh, Rockwell, which uh, used in conjunction with the Allen Bradley controllers. Um, I've got a quick tips um, uh, page up here, I'll just close that. Now, the first thing we need to do is to tell the software what controller we're going to be connecting to via the um, USB cable. So when I click down in the catalog on the controllers, you're going to have a whole selection of, of a whole range of PLCs there, large, small, um, and what we're going to be using today, which is the um, Smart Relay. So in the Micro 810 family, I select the 2080 um, LC1012QWB, and I drag that over, and I can drop that into the um, tree uh, project organizer here. I'm going to select, uh, go back to Major Revision 1 here, because that's how our controllers are currently set up. Okay, that drops the, that drops that tree into the um, project organizer. So there's our project tree. If I double click on the Micro 810, brings up the um, connection screen. Um, I can upload, download, um, go to program mode, go to run mode, um, connect, and so forth uh, via the USB cable. It's got some information down here. There's some oh, some manuals, help, uh, some information on the controller. If I right mouse click here on the LCD screen, I can actually add the LCD screen, which shows uh, which is what how ours um, how our controllers are set up with the manual input or manual interface. So uh, we can manually um, input through uh, via that uh, control via that uh, module. Um, we can also observe the current status of the PLC of the um, smart relay where, uh, as far as the where the inputs and outputs are on and off. Next, we need to create a, um, uh, a programming module. So, on programs, if I right mouse click, I can add. Now, structured, I can add structured text, ladder diagram, or function blocks. Um, structured text to hi uh, high-level language, um, which is the most in economical way to pr program, but you'll need to um, you'll need more training. Um, function blocks, fu function block diagrams. Um, again, they, they are a quick way to program, but you need further training on those. Um, ladder diagram, which we'll, we'll use today, we'll select the ladder diagram. Um, as electricians, we understand uh, circuit diagrams, so ladder, ladder, ladder uh, logic is, is very similar. Now, nothing changed here on the screen, but my except for my program tree here, it include, it's now included my uh, programming um, uh, module here. If I right mouse, mouse click on there, I can rename that, so I can call that um, Project 1. Okay, and then I can double click and bring up my um, bring up my programming module. Now, because I've told the told the, the uh, software what uh, controller I'm going to use and also how we're going to program today, um, it provides me with the um, the appropriate toolbox to use with it. Now, I've got a rung for when I can include an extra rung. I can drag that over. Um, I've got return and jump, which are a couple of advanced programming f uh, functions which we won't be using today. Um, there's things like a, a branch, a, a parallel branch. Um, what we call is just an output, um, is a direct coil. The inverse of that, the uh, reverse coil. A couple of special functions, set coil, and used in conjunction with a reset coil, you can set and reset. It's got some what they call pulse rising edge, uh, pulse falling edge, both coil and contacts. Um, they're special uh, features where they, they look for the rising edge of the input and the falling edge of the input. What we see is what we understand as a normally open contact is here is a direct contact and a normally closed contact is a reverse contact. We'll be looking at uh, how, uh, at a timer and a counter also today um, and we've used the block for that. So what I'll do now is I'll just drag a I'll left mouse click on the direct contact, drag it over, drop it into my um, first rung of my program. Okay, if I click on the um, input output um, here, I've got uh, input output micro 810. It shows it gives me the listing of my um, four um, outputs, my relay outputs 00 to 03, and my eight inputs. So it's DO for output and DI for input. So 00 through 07 is my eight inputs. I'll select my first input. Um, I'll give it a name. My start. I'll just call it. Give it a start button. Okay, and what it does, is it addresses that uh, element there to say that if I put a 24 volt signal onto my, my 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 first input uh, zero zero, it'll 
tells the logic to come along, come into the um, into the logic here, and close that close that element of the rung. Okay, let's put a, a coil, a direct coil. So I'll drag a, a coil up to here and drop that in. Um, now I could use my I could use my f uh, any any of my outputs here, but um, norm usually when you when you're programming, um, we um, we use what we call internal relays. Okay, by using internal relays, um, we can um, we can we we're, we're not wasting our uh, physical outputs. Okay, so I'm just going to call this internal one. Um, just so that's just my in, in internal relay. Okay. Um, now, um, what I'll do now is uh, I'll I'm going to drag across a um, a branch. So I'm going to drag this branch over here, uh, drop it on top, and it gives me my parallel branch there. Because what I'll do is, if I'm going to say just just set up a start-stop um, function here, I'll need a hold-in contact. Okay, so I'll bring my um, direct contact over. So I'll drag a direct contact over, drop it in. Okay, and I'm going to use my internal um, internal one. So I'm going to use the internal one um, internal relay here. So what that is, it's a contact off that internal relay. So it acts exactly exactly the same in as far as your logic goes. It acts exactly the same as it would do with a um, uh, with an external uh, relay output. But again, like I said before, it, it it's it's so we don't waste our uh, external um, relay um, the the outputs because we only have four of them. Now the logic here is is very similar in terms of our uh, circuit diagrams. So we have um, all the uh, all the um, uh, the action elements um, in this part of the part of the uh, circuit. Um, for the outputs, we only have the one output uh, for any any rung. So we don't have we can't put outputs in series with each other um, as as you would do with a with a circuit diagram. You wouldn't have coils, so you can picture these as the coils of a relay. Um, so they don't go in series. So um, if you need um, if you need extra logic, you can build a new line below and put a new internal relay in. Okay, uh, let's put another con let's put another contact. Let's put a stop button in as well. Um, so that'll have to be an actual input. So for a stop. Okay, you'll also notice for my stop button here, I'm using a normally open contact. I don't use normally closed like I do with my uh, with my with my normal um, uh, circuit diagram. The reason for is the the actual stop button in the field takes care of that stop function, and that feeds a closed function to the to, to the to the logic. So when we when we um, when we switch this on and our normally closed uh, stop button in the field will signal to this to actually close. So so we we um, all our logic same with um, uh, overloads and so forth will show a um, will show us with a, a normally open. So that that's the difference between our relay logic and our um, circuit diagram. The, the logic we apply to our circuit diagrams. Okay, now we'll um, we'll put another uh, rung in. So I'll just drag a rung over, um, drop that in. Oh, what I can do here too, um, here, um, so I can put I can put descriptors into each of my lines here, um, and I can actually write um, I can actually write information um, up here too. Um, So this is the start of our program. So I can also in in this section here in the blocks I can actually type information in here too. This is this can be important um, if you're if you're um, uh, when when programming to actually explain what what's actually happening in the program. It's also good too for if you come in to um, to make any changes if you're doing any upgrades or. Or um, uh, putting any um, uh, um, put
putting any fixes in to your into the program it tells other people what you've actually done so uh, it's good it's good to always have um put put a lot put whatever information that's required into into your pro into the um onto the program okay so let's take another direct contact over here um okay i can i can use the variable selector here or i can um I can click on if I click here I get a I get a drop down list and I can also come down and select um and uh, actually um address address that particular um element there. So again I'm just saying what's what's happening here then is just simply when I press my start button, as long as my stop button's closed, the internal relay will close and that internal contact will close holding that in when I release my start. Um and so the internal contact here will close and um what we'll do now is we'll just I'll bring a block over okay and um now uh my block um so what I'm going to do now is going to put a timer in so I'm going to scroll down you can see there's a whole there's a large range of function blocks here so um there's a lot of function blocks um again it, you'll need training to actually understand how to use them how to use them so what we're going to use, look for now is, is a timer, um, time on delay. So uh, our simple time on delay timer. So I'll click on that and go OK, and it gives me a time on delay timer. Okay. Now what I need to do is um, I click in this box here, and I need to tell it it's going to be a T for time. Um, I'll put a hash there, and then I say OK. I'll give it say five seconds. Now 5s is five seconds. Five. If I put an m in there, it's minutes. Uh, H for hat for H for hours and so forth. Okay. If you if you um you notice there's a little excl 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 exc exclamation mark down in the um, right hand corner of the box here until you actually put put your um uh, you address the block um, and that tells you that it it um that uh, it 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 needs um it needs something in that in that block. Okay. So um, otherwise, it's 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 uh, it's sort of faulty. So that's our that's our predetermined time. Um, so that'll that'll run. That means this timer when this when this closes, that'll run f that'll run for five seconds. So the elapsed time will show the elapsed time. It'll count it'll count that five seconds out, and then it'll turn this um, cue, which is the output of this timer, it'll turn that on. All right. So what we'll need then is a, another coil. So we'll need another direct coil here. Okay, so this time I'm going to I'm going to turn on a um, I'm going to turn on a uh, an actual relay. Okay, so I'm going to call this my my output one. Okay, so I've I've now um, so now I've I've selected my um, uh, the first the first relay output uh, output one there will turn on five seconds after I press my start button. Okay, so we've we've just carried out a um uh, a simple function there of a start stop um with a um timed output. Alright, let's drag another branch in. Oh, sorry. That was a um rung I was trying to drag in there, sorry. Drag, drag another rung in. And again, we need to be labeling these. We need to be putting in information um, and labeling them as we go. I, as I'm as I'm just just showing you how to put different elements into here. Um, it's not actually not actually a working working um, program, of course. Okay, so what I'll show you this time is how to how we do a counter. So in on many times we want to we want to um, have something that that, um, that provides counting for us. So you may want a um, a situation where um, uh, in a program that uh, it's counting the number of times a an overload uh, will trip. So if the overload trips too many times, it'll it'll then signal to the um, to the controller and say, okay, don't don't let the motor run for uh, for another hour or so because it's been started too many times this hour and so forth and all those sorts of things. So many times um, you um, uh, for, uh, for use of counters. That, 
they can be useful for um, a counters that use handy one two for um, doing a set reset um, function for for um, doing standby and duty cycle pumps and so forth. So whole range of whole range of um, applications for counters. They're, they're end endless really. But let's just we'll just see how we actually put a counter in. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just put a, um, a contact in. Um, so we'll put a direct contact here. Um, and I'll use another contact. I'll use another input. Um, so I'll just call this my um, count input. So every time I every time this input this input operates, my counter will count. Okay. So I'll drag the block over again. Now this time I'm going to find go look for a counter. So I'm going. It's it's in alphabetical order. So I come down looking for. Um, C for count. Okay, so there's my counter up. See, I've got count down, I've got counter up down. So, a whole range of different functions there. So, um, I'll just choose my, my standard counter up. Okay, um, and so what I'll do is I'll put a, um, I'll also put a, another coil in. So, a uh, direct coil. I'll drag my coil in so when my count when my um, when my counter uh, actuates it'll actually it'll actually go out and do something so there's my output two okay so it's just allocated to that to that um, to that output it'll go it'll go and uh, so whatever we've uh, whatever we determined our counter is going to do for us it'll go and, and turn turn that uh, relay on Okay, now, um, so our counter, so again, we have got our exclamation marks here showing us we need to put something into these boxes. Okay. So if I click on there, and I'm just going to put the number four in. So that's going to tell me now my, my um, predetermined value is four. So, um, so it wants to see um, four counts. So it means I've got to turn my input on, on and off four times. So I'll switch my input on and off four times, and then my counter will turn on, turning on this output. Okay, the um, uh, the value, the actual counter value, will show you. So at any point you look at the program, you can see the actual value of the counter. Okay, um, now the reset. I'll click into here, and what I, I need something to reset. So I could use an input. I could use one of my another one of my inputs to actually come in and reset the counter. Um, but an, a common way to actually do it is to actually use the actual output. So output two is to is to use its own output here. So to say that when it actually counts and does its job, it'll then switch itself off. So it'll go off, do its job, and reset itself. But again, I, I can use to to reset that. I'm I'm just doing this for the exercise just to show you. So this will go through, do four counts, go off. It'll close my close my um uh, my second output. It'll then reset itself and reset, uh, ready, ready to start counting again. Okay, then at this point we need to um, come up to here and build, and click on build, and what this does now, it goes through and confirms the program down here in the output. It's got uh, you can you can watch the um, the build build started. Um, Okay, it's now going through and checking checking the program and saying there's no errors, no warnings, and okay, build end. Okay, so build one succeeded, zero failed, and um, so forth. So there's no error message. So what it's saying, there's no error messages there. So it usually comes up and gives you error messages, which you can click on. It'll tell you tell you where where any particular fault is in the in, in the program. Okay, so that's just a quick. Um, uh, that's just an introduction to um, to how to program the elements in there. This is the first part of it. Um, in the in the second uh, in the second video, we'll have a look at actually connecting to the um, to the uh, controller itself via the uh, USB um, the USB cable. Okay, well, thank you for listening.